Buona tarda, buenas tardes. Good afternoon for the very last time for 2019 from the main auditorium. The theme for this year's Smart Cities Expo World Congress is Cities Made of Dreams. When I think of that phrase, I also think of the 2030 development agenda. What is possible when we all work together? That also is the theme for this afternoon's final plenary. Thank you for being part of it. I am absolutely convinced there is as much expertise here in this room as there will be in these seats. So I want to show you something so that you can take part in this conversation. We are not leaving you to the last five minutes at the end. That is a waste of your brain power. So, microphone is there. If you're near that microphone, that is yours. There's a microphone just there. That is your microphone, right there. And one more, just here. So when you have something to contribute, do go to that microphone, and then the chair for that session will know that you want to add something. He's gonna to come to you much sooner than very much at the end, so that you can be part of this final plenary session. So I am going to introduce you to Graham Coakley who is your chair for this afternoon. He will be bringing on his plenary session speakers. Please make him feel very welcome and fill this room with very loud applause. Go for it. Femi gave you the warning gun. The microphones are there and we are going to use them. So good afternoon. This is the last leg, the last mile, the last hurdle. And thank you very much indeed for, for joining us. My name's Graham. Um, I'm going to introduce two people who I'm delighted to have on stage. And I know some well, and they're fun. So we're going to have some fun this afternoon. Um, what I'd like to do is to just very briefly set the scene um, and ask you a question, actually, as a starting point. There's a document called Transforming Our World, Agenda 2030. It's 41 pages long, and it's kind of important. Be honest. Who's read it? A modest proportion. Well done. That's very much the scene set for our conversation today. And the good news is, if you haven't read it, don't worry. We've got experts here that know all about it. And we've got a hint in terms of some of the slides. And there's only two to help with that. So let me start in terms of the title. Agenda 2030, how are cities leading the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals? Now, my guess is that 99% of you know about Sustainable Development Goals, need a little reminder about how many there are and exactly what they say and you know that these things are important. Transforming our world, and that matters. Let me show you a picture about why that matters. Here's the world in 2010, the top 20 cities by population. And you look at those and you go, that's interesting, and they're up in the north. And then the picture changes by 2050, and you go, well, that's interesting. Some of these names I haven't heard of. And then you see the picture in 2100, and it's very, very different. Transforming our world. This is the agenda that we need to deal with, and it's very important. And people are at the core of that. That's you and that's me. And digitization provides a vehicle for that transformation to a better place. And our choice is, are we going to make it a better place? Transforming our world. These are the sustainable development goals. Um, so we're going to leave this here as a backdrop in terms of what's the agenda. Now, let me grab a seat and introduce to you some delightful characters. We have here Miguel, who I met, I think, three or four years ago, a bubble of fun and energy. Um, and Miguel Planas was uh, running for quite some time um, thinking around PPP. How is it that we're looking at dealing with partnerships across an important divide? 
And Miguel, very recently, congratulations, picked up the role of being the commissioner for 2030 for Barcelona, the city of Barcelona. And Barcelona takes on an important role around that. So that's Miguel, and we'll hear his opinion from a city's perspective um, in terms of what is a leading city in the world thinking about doing to deal with the 2030 agenda. And Dr. Agatha Krause importantly starts from a position of life more than a decade actually doing urban planning. So understanding what's the fabric of cities, what's the nature of cities, how do they work as a system. And more recently, over the last few years, she's joined United Nations for Europe. So is taking a more institutional perspective on this. Both of these have worked together. So they're not fighting and they're smiling and that's good. So they've worked together um, around this particular agenda in terms of, of 2030. So that's um, the two people. Now remember, you got the warning gun. And so if you uh, fall asleep or if you don't engage in this conversation, blame yourselves. Don't blame us. I'm going to give you plenty of choice to actually get engaged in this. So we've got somebody from Barcelona, a leading city, who's dealing with the agenda of 2030. And we've got somebody from an institutional perspective who understands cities, who's looking at it from the UN perspective, both of which are involved in those sustainable development goals. Here is your first opportunity to think about what would I like to ask these characters? So right from the start, if you have any thoughts in terms of questions you'd like to pose or issues you'd like to explore, then we will explore that. I have an agenda as well, so that's fine if you don't. But here's your first opportunity. So if you could pop up to the microphone, you have a chance now to set a bit of the agenda of what is a dynamic conversation that we're going to have. There's a gentleman over there, please. And we'll take the questions quite quickly or the thoughts quite quickly, and we'll build that into our conversation. So if you could mention your name and um, briefly what it is that you'd like to say, that'd be super. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Thomas Verard. Um, so I know the focus is on cities, um, but I'm also really curious to hear your thoughts um, on how we can connect individuals um, with the implications of their shopping decisions, so the environmental impact of, of how they shop. Do, do, you, do you mean individuals within cities, or do you mean individuals in general, which includes people in the countryside? Uh, let's keep it to cities. OK. Yep. So Thanks. building people into that. Thank you for the question, because that's absolutely important. Are there any other thoughts and questions? My goodness, here's a lineup of them. Sorry, <laughs> Fanny, are you sure you're allowed to be at the back? <laughs> Please, good. So, uh, name and rank, serial number, and, and what's your point of view? Yeah, good. Luis Novo from Mexico, and I just like to know if you guys have an action plan, and if you share that action plan on how to tackle the 17 goals. Super. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Umesh. My question is, how are we going to prepare the current young generation for them to get aware and how to be prepared for them to face that 210080 which you put on the screen. Thank that you. is my question. Super. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, my name is Florencia and I have two uh, questions. Sorry. Uh, the first one would be related to data. I have been hearing a lot about data during the last three days, uh, but I'm still not sure what is going to happen with that data, who's going, going to analyze it, and if we are going to see more than numbers. Are, is anyone interested in analyzing what's behind in terms of uh, subjective well-being, uh, behind like what is um, driving people to make a choice in terms of mobility, for example? And then uh, are we going to use that information to make uh, decisions, to argument for or against uh, investment? And the other question is related to um, disruptive policies. So yesterday we heard, we heard about uh, um, all the disruptive policies in New York, 
what happened uh, in the year 2007 with the painting streets and uh, making Times Square pedestrianized and uh, the building of uh, um, bicycle lanes. That was a, a huge disruption. But what is going to happen now? What, what is going to be the next disruption policy? I think that we've seen in the last month that people are up to here with what we have been doing as decision makers. People don't like what, are we, what we are doing uh, lately, and people are going to the streets and complain about that. So I see that all those uh, policies are very nice, but what are we going to do as decision makers to really uh, de deliver those uh, objectives? Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I did you want to say something before me? You can go first. I cede my time to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I have a very broad question. My name is Izzy. I'm studying um, sustainable business in Barcelona. Uh, I know the focus is on cities, but I would like uh, maybe a little bit of discussion bringing in uh, big industry and corporations and big business um, to see how they're going to help cities implement the SDGs. Yeah, thank you. And, and when we explore the topic of partnership, then clearly we need to think of all actors and all sectors. So it's a very good prompt. Um, and Femi, you're very important. What have you? My name is Femi. I live in the main auditorium at Theoret Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. Uh, as a journalist, I travel around the world and I cover the SDGs all the time. But is it your experience that the communities that you work with and for and the citizens that you know actually know and understand the SDGs, the 2030 agenda, and does it matter even if they don't. Yeah, that's a really good point. Communications and such like. Well, 80% of the audience could probably do with a dose of reminding. In fact, 100% probably could. And, and making it real is actually what, it, what matters. Uh, by the way, uh, if I could, just my observation, I've been here since the beginning, not of this three days, but of, of, of the whole uh, process that we've been through. And it's fascinating each year observing what's happening and how the agenda is changing. And, and this agenda, in terms of the SDGs, 10 years ago, eight years ago, wouldn't be on the agenda. We'd be talking about technology. It's wonderful to be talking about something which is, so what happens next across really important topics? And I think that that aspect of the maturation of the agenda is really fun. Good. So, um, thank you indeed for that. If during the course of the discussions you get particularly aggravated about something and want to air your point of view, fire away. That's what it's all about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each of the uh, Miguel and, and Agatha just to give a bit of an impression in terms of organizationally what they do around this agenda uh, and what makes it exciting for them personally. Because it's all very well thinking about organizationally what happens and what I should do, but what's in the heart? What drives that at a personal level? And that's important because we're all people, going back to the first question. Um, and then um, we'll explore a few questions, and I'd like to make sure that, that we address the points you've raised and that we add to that. So at any point, if it doesn't feel like we're moving in the right direction, you've got something, then please uh, keep it short, but keep it in the conversation. So let me start with yourself, um, Miguel. Um, a, a shift in terms of role, um, two months in, I think, or thereabouts. So everything is think and will and what's going to happen next and, uh, and, and, and such like. Tell us a little bit, briefly, in terms of, as a city, um, how you see Barcelona addressing the 2030 agenda. And feel free to pick up some of the points that perhaps have been raised to date. And then, more personally, having shifted from the position you, you were in terms of, of uh, looking at PPP and partnerships, what excites you about the current role you've got in, in Barcelona? Okay. Well, thank you. And, and really, it's, it's an honor being here with Agatha and Graham, because if, if you don't know Graham, you will know it today. And it's great to hear him, because he always has very interesting thoughts. And regarding my brand new position, exactly, it's only, only two, two months that I started. The, the, the first thing I, I can realize, I, I, I can feel from, from this position is that the city council, Barcelona city council, is clearly compromised with the 2030 agenda. And maybe it's, it's just big words, but at the end, you can see that there's some, several key elements that are already working on 
you know that our government started like around six months ago, so it's brand new also. But in these six months, we have done several things that I think they're, they're quite important. The first one is that on the, on the, on the government bodies, we have created this responsibility of one person, the, our deputy major, Elijah Bonnet, that is in charge of a 2030 agenda, and with someone that has to And do you know other cities that are doing the same thing? Um, not yet. Yeah. So that, you know, that's <laughs> the first thing. Anybody from a city in the audience, have you got somebody who's actually charged with the 2030 agenda? That's a good thought for you. And another thing that it's, I think it's even more important than that is that we have decided that all the budgets for the next years and the, what we call the municipal action plan have to be aligned with the agenda. So that means that all the, all the budget, you have to be able to relate it not with the SDGs, not, with the, not only with the 17 SDGs, uh, 17 goals, but also with the 169 targets. Not with all of them, of course, but with the one that they, they fit with. And this is important because at the end, we will be able to measure to be able, if we're working on the, we're putting the efforts in the right, in the right direction. And, and a last thing that, that I think it's, it's maybe sim symbolic, but, it, but it's important for us, the first agreement between all the political parties in the, in the city council, the first agreement between all of them, has been that Barcelona has to reach the 2030 agenda. Sorry, say again? Barcelona has to reach the 2030 agenda. Yeah. All the political parties, from the government, from the position, they have voted together about this resolution, that we have to move on to the 2030 agenda. We have to reach it. And considering reality in Barcelona, yes. Spain, and Europe, having this agreement is not a, a, a bad agreement. And from, from the personal side, uh, well, it's great to be working, having the opportunity to try to change things, but even more in a more a personal thing. I, I really like this job and, and, and I'm really engaged with it basically because I think about my kids. I have two very nice kids. Well, not, not always, but almost. Huh? Teenagers. Uh, but I think about them and, I, and, I, and I'm really uh, wor uh, worried about his, their future. And I think the future is the, if you want to give them hope, if you want to give them uh, opportunities, this goes through the 2030 agenda. Thank you. Uh, and my guess is that that point about having kids and worrying about them, because 2100 is not that far away, um, it, it starts to make it very real and very personal in terms of, so what can we do? Sent, excellent. Thank you for that, Miguel. Agatha. So tell us the same sort of thing from, a, from a, an organizational perspective. Um, how do you see the UN in its journey, trying to actually move from a position, as, uh, as Femi said, you know, do people know about this? I think they've heard about it. Do they really know about it and feel it from here rather than here? So from an organizational perspective, where do you see the UN is at in the agenda? And from a personal perspective, why, why is it, are you passionate about it and, and why are you passionate about it? Thank you. So um, I do represent the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe which is one of the uh, UN commissions. Um, it says in the title Europe, but what in fact we do, we are working on policy development, policy implementation, harmonization, regulation, standardization across 56 countries. And it's global north. And if you're asking about how UN is embracing sustainable development goals being effectively its creator, time have, times have changed. What I mean is that we look back and think about sustainable development as a concept reaching a couple of decades now. But when it comes to actual institutionalization of the concept, we're thinking about first millennium development goals. But more importantly, we start counting and understanding the importance of speeding up our actions since 2015, the introduction of sustainable development goals. So there is a continuity of our actions on the one side. On the, on the other side, 2015 has been, was a particularly important year um, when it comes to um, realization of how the time is passing. 
and what else needs to be done and how serious we need to get about we, when I say we, it doesn't mean the institution itself, but the countries within the UNDC region and the cities and the citizens in order to realize the 2030 Agenda Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, and on a personal level, um, I'm urban planner by qualification and uh, it's, it does make a difference for me being urban planner. What it means is that if you mature or grow up thinking about development of cities, from various perspectives, social, economic, environmental, governance, finance related, you name it. Then you educating yourself to look at complex problems in a comprehensive way and looking for complex solutions. Uh, part of my curriculum has been understanding what is sustainable development from, let's say, early days. And at the beginning, it seemed like an idea somewhere out there. I didn't know where to tie it up. But having been also, having worked with cities directly, having worked with, um, in the context of EU institutions, it all became more and more apparent that this idea out there and is, is out there, but there are multiple ways of actually realizing it, institutionalizing it, putting it into the policy and implementing policies accordingly. And I think having understood this complexity of for sustainable development, how important it is to realize it, I think the most important is to believe in it. So um, I would say what brought me to where I am now is believing that this is the future, that without consideration about SDGs, about the 2030 agenda, we will go no farther when it comes to urban development and a deep faith that only by acting accordingly, um, we as a humanity, uh, we as professionals can introduce change. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to start actually uh, l looking at that picture. Um, every time I look at it and I think of a city, I actually kind of go, hang on a second, the dots all join up, um, which is about the systemic nature of how a city operates. Um, and understanding the complexity of that, not apologizing for the complexity, actually managing it. So, so let's explore that. So as a city in Barcelona, in terms of the 2030 agenda, you've got all of these SDGs. Are, out of the 17, are they all relevant at a city level? Um, or are there ones that you kind of go, no, 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 no? Because there's only one of them that actually talks about cities, but frankly, I think the whole damn lot of them are really important. Is that how you see it as well, Miguel? Yeah. Uh, in our case, we, we clear know that we have to work with the 17 goals. We have to work to reach the, uh, all of them. And, and we have done a, a, right now a, a first work to what, what it's called localization of the SDGs. What does that mean? Basically, it means that you have to adapt the SDGs to your reality. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at the titles of the SDGs, it's hard not to adapt it to your reality because you can, you can, you can, you can feel uh, comfortable with all of them. So you have to go uh, below the SDGs, you have to go to the targets, the 196 targets. So, so you also nine. mentioned earlier, the, uh, which I really liked, was uh, attaching it to money. So the budgets need to line up to the picture right. that we're looking at here, which means that all of the owners of the various different sectors that are, shall we say, the silos of, of government or the silos of, of a city need to start lining up not just their actions, but also their money, because we had a question about actions from, from, uh, from Mexico. It, is, is that the task that you're going to pick up now as part of the 2030 agenda, or is you, you're starting to really see that owned by the various different uh, lines of service in the city. Do you see that ambition, that common ambition towards a joint target, something they go, yeah, 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 that's interesting, or actually now my budgets are lined up and this is how I've done it? Where are we at in that journey at a city level? Okay, at the city level, what we have to do is, first we have to have to clear the picture. And that's, that's very important. And, 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 and coming back to the previous question, it's okay, from the 169 targets that we have, we have checked that Barcelona is working in aligned or uh, affecting 92% of them. Why? Because, because we're a big city 
and maybe we're too ambitious and we want to talk about that we want to work with plenty of things. But the thing is that we have 92% of the, of the target we have to work over there. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is have to, we have to, what we call, we have to find the gap. Where are we right now? And how far are we from the goals? How far are we to reach the target? And from here, so as, as you can say, I'm talking from a very wide point of view. We're making the picture for all the community of the, of the, of the city council. And, and from here, when we see the, the gap, we have to see the size of the gap. And from here, we're able to see, OK, which should be the, 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 the targets, the goals, the policies behind that we have, to, and we have to push more, but put more resources. So here, one thing that we have decided, and it's something that we're working on, is that we, will have like a, we are working to have a coordination body that we coordinate all the innovation that exists in, in, in our city council. We, we are very uh, lucky in Barcelona, at, at, at least at the, at, at the, at the council uh, level, because our workers are very like, uh, engaged. They are very compromised. So it's people like they, they work alone. You don't have to say nothing. They just keep working. So, so that means that all the silos, and we have silos, because when it's a big organization, there's always silos. All these silos have innovation bodies, innovation departments. And that's great, because they move. What we have to be clear is that we have like a coordination between all of them, and everyone is moving in the right direction, in the right direction of reaching the goal. Uh, and so to coordination bodies, for some people, sound like horrible things, because it's bureaucratic <laughs> and administrative. But do you sense that, that the, uh, there was a question about policies and, and disruptive policies and such like? You know, e-bikes are arriving and have arrived in various different cities and stunned a lot of the, the city administration in terms of is it a good thing or a bad thing? And where are we at in our, on our journey? Do you feel that, that, um, that Barcelona, and be, please be honest, do you feel that Barcelona is agile enough as an organization to move forward? Is it listening enough to the, to the people um, and, and speeding up the whole process of trying to, to deal with disruption and have agile policies that push us towards, with budgets, towards the, 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 the SDGs. You know, if, if you said on a scale of one to 10, be honest. Okay. Hold them to that. Be honest. <laughs> Where is Barcelona on a scale of one to 10 in terms of being able to be agile around this? And nobody will quote you beyond that. <laughs> okay. Personal view. So, before answering the scale thing, I would like to say that... Uh, He's hoping I'm not going to hold him to it. <laughs> the thing is that we have to. Yes. There's no point of not, of, not, of not doing it. So, so we really have to move in that direction. I think that Barcelona is very agile. And, and you can have seen in the, in the last years that we've been able to start new projects. It's hard to me to put a, a score from 1 to 10, basically because I just arrived two months ago. So I, I really need to have more information at that Give point. Give me a range. You're not okay. leaving without a number. <laughs> OK. For sure, we, 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 we are on the right direction. We're working correctly, doing the great efforts. And OK, I would say we're above 5 for sure. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. We got a number out of them. Thank you. So, so let's turn now from Barcelona, which is a specific city, to all the rest of them. Because Barcelona matters, but all the rest of them matter as well. And I think that draws in the kind of institutional side of, so what is it that the UN can do? And is, what is it that you can do in terms of the role that Barcelona plays as part of the superstructure to actually move this forward en masse, at pace, with big impact? Um, what is it that UN can do and is doing to try and figure out where are the Barcelonas that are around the world that can do good things? And how do we actually get the smaller places where most people live and really accelerate that whole process? How do you feel as an institution on a scale of one to 10? <laughs> How, how are we doing? What are we You're really doing? having fun? <laughs> where's the gap? You talked about gaps earlier. So where is the gap and what do we need to do to close that? To close the gap to, to so, so as an institution, you're looking there at a whole bunch of cities. 
thousands of them, some good, some big, some small. It, it, you can be all talk and no action, or it could be all action as is appropriate. What is, what is UN for Europe doing mm -hmm. within Europe and, and maybe beyond to actually really help to accelerate that whole, to, to, to inculcate these uh, betterment of life um, into people, communications, and then action, because we had a question about action plans. I heard a, a good answer around action plans, actually, from Barcelona. I like that. So, so from an institutional perspective. Um, first of all, I would like to refer to Barcelona, because I think it's a very interesting question you asked um, before was about how would you how my colleague would like to position himself, but I would like to shed a light on how we see Barcelona. I actually have professional experience working with the Barcelona, with the municipality of Barcelona over the last three years, and I worked with many municipalities uh, in my professional uh, life. And I'm more than pleased uh, and happy. And every time I'm coming to the city and uh, speaking with the municipality, I'm opening my eyes wider and wider about how much enthusiasm uh, power and uh, uh, reason is behind their actions. So putting the things into perspective, I would like, I have only good things uh, to say about my experience of working with the city of Barcelona and discussions and the way things are being implemented, progressiveness. Um, before I was working on the subject of housing, stronger with the city of Barcelona that I am at the moment. And for instance, housing, um, um, the city of Barcelona and the metropolitan region have introduced a housing observatory Metropolitan Housing Observatory, there is not that many of them in Europe uh, at this scale, and they have done it within two years. You are two years running now, approximately, with amazing results, some very sharp data uh, being produced and being used for policy. So I would like to thank my colleague in Barcelona here on uh, their hard work. So are you picking up those nuggets of excellence as an, or, as an institution um, in terms of where the best practice is to actually then provide really pragmatic, simple tools that can help other cities uh, get better faster. Is that part of what you're doing? Yes, indeed. Um, I mean, at the institutional level, we um, work on, in, in multiple ways, let's say, in order to realize the 2030 agenda. We work on the global way within the U U UNSC region. So we are trying to see how, what are the challenges in the region, what are the opportunities in the region, um, how the, it, globally it fits into what's happening, the dynamics in the region fit into the global image. So that's the one way, the, let's say the, uh, the, the more global way, the more, let's say, even bureaucratic administrative way, you have to be able to see what's happening in the region. But more importantly, we're working with the governments. So with the national governments, obviously, uh, UNEC works with the governments, this is our constituency. Uh, we look at what's happening at country level as a whole. That being said, the localization of the 2030 agenda is of a key importance, and we institutionally acknowledge that as well, which means we're not working only working with the governments, but we are also working with cities, with cities more and more directly, obviously appreciating uh, appreciative the values of such collaboration. The reason, the reason is that countries are not one whole homogeneous entities. Mm. Uh, cities uh, within the countries differ uh, considerably. They have their own specificities, they have their own values, and it's important also to recognize these values because if you ask me about what is, where we are heading, what is, how far are we from uh, the global objective, my question is what is the global objective and where is it? Because having worked with cities and with the countries, I see a particularly interesting um, ideas about and visions for, for the cities, in fact. Um, they have their own ideas, they have their own identities, they have their own cultures, they have their own aspirations, which means that the, the vision for what a sustainable city for city A is not the same for the city B. It's not that you can introduce the same smart solutions in the city A and consider it as the, creating the most powerful sustainable city in, in uh, this particular context against all the um, other contexts. Yeah, so uh, I completely get your point. So in your conversations with the governance, recognizing what's the, the patterns that emerge at a city level, um, that discussion with governments in terms of the need to support the roles that they play versus the role that cities play, um, is there enough 
uh, traction, engagement and, and honesty in the conversation at a government level that they, they see it and they're helping to accelerate. Because I think the, the point that I'm trying to draw out is that aspect of doing things better faster. Are we doing things fast enough? Is, is, the, is the passion and urgency, um, do you see that within the European context and do you hear it from colleagues um, in terms of the global context? I see a number of questions and I have yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Um, um, so first of all, about the, the national and the local. So obviously, our, we're working with the governments mainly. However, what we do regularly, we work with cities regularly. We invite cities, uh, City of Barcelona, other cities, uh, Portugal cities, Cascas recently, Glasgow, you name it. Uh, coming to our meetings regularly, showcasing what they are doing and sharing their challenges. And they're doing that at international level. They're also doing that in front of their own governments. And it's important to have all these views in order to be able to take decisions which are responsible for all. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. So, so, so just uh, briefly, it's, it's, yes, all cities are different, like all individuals are different, but there's a pattern and there's a similarity that's mm -hmm. there. And, and I would see that uh, roles of governments mm -hmm. and roles of institutions to look for those common patterns. The, this is a pattern, mm -hmm. to look for those common patterns, to actually understand what are the ingredients of success and to help inculcate that in the broader community. Mm -hmm. With the experience of cities through the governments, that, that would be very much a role that UN could play. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you feel that you are playing that role? I mean, um, you can look at it really in various ways and I would like to on the one side emphasize that indeed Europe um, against the 56 countries that we have here in this region is particularly distinctive. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's institutionally most of the countries within, let's say, geographical Europe is part of the European Union and they obviously have this uh, the supra, uh, supranational structure guiding their, um, their practices. Uh, at the national level. So, um, and also uh, Europe is getting old. Um, we have problems with urban aging. Uh, we have problems uh, in, in Europe with uh, um, uh, smart mobility, uh, with public transportations. Um, and uh, to the lesser extent, with regard to access to decent quality affordable housing. It's still a problem, but if you think about the world as a whole, about the issue of slums, uh, the problems of, uh, let's say, housing affordability in Europe in comparison, let's say, to Global South mm. are, 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 are different. Um, yeah. So, so let me spur one point, which is about that sense of urgency, that sense of doing things mm. faster and better. Yeah. Um, a, a hypothesis. In my own mind, 2030 is just around the corner. It's, it's, it's coming very soon and clearly we need uh, targets. Um, we need to measure against that and I think your, your model that you, you described for Barcelona is very good. But in my mind, yes, let's have a 2030 plan and make it practical, make it actionable. But do we need to look forward to the slide that showed 2100 to really start to say, whoa, this is very different. Um, to stimulate that sense of urgency, uh, because that's not something that the individual cities should do. That's the sort of thing that organizations like the, the UM and, and such like could play a role in to actually say, let's get our heads up and look forward to our kids generation or our kids kids generation where the world is a very different place. And that then drives passion, interest, momentum, innovation, you talked about that earlier. Is that something that is in the conversation of the, the UN at the moment? Yes, um, within my institution it's very much, and I believe across, across the institution it's very much a uh, part of the conversation. We are realizing 2020 is just around the corner and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a burning issue. Um, that being said, it's not that a UN works top down. It's not that we are in position or we have the powers to tell governments what to do. On the other side, we actually are learning from the governments um, in the UNEC region, from the countries themselves about how to do things better. Um, and about, again, about sense of urgency and how to introduce change faster. Um, we actually learn a lot from the local level because um, in terms of scaling up uh, things, obviously that, that is a little bit more pro problematic because you cannot see that practices at, um, in one city can 
uh, lead to uh, resolving the sustainable development problems at the global scale. That's not happening. But what is happening at the local level is innovation. Um, there is a lot of creative thinking and there is a determination that we really see. Um, I, I don't want to say nowhere else, but this, the sense of urgency and the sense of helping the citizens is the, the most loud spoken about at the local level. It's the sense of responsibility of local governments to respond to the needs. And what yeah. I want to say is that I have a pleasure working with municipalities in Norway at the moment. So what we are doing is uh, we are um, assessing sustain uh, um, smartness and sustainability of 17 Norwegian cities. And we have the project that will last until mid 2021 and about the elements of how to speed up the whole process. It was not us going, going there and telling them how to do what they know how to do. They know best what to do. It's us about uh, being there, being there as an advisor, observing, um, evaluating, helping them to learn, learn fast, but also us learning from them. Yeah. But what I meant to say is that I observe that the cities in Norway have the power, have the knowledge and have the experience to uh, scale up what they're doing. They're really seeing themselves as a part of the solutions. That's first thing. Second, they think themselves as a part of the system. Yeah. Let so, me take that down a level, if I may, from your role looking at the cities to the question about people and more importantly, the question about young people. Um, and. And, and also to a certain extent touching on a little bit of the data discussion in terms of the sensitivity, but the involvement of, because you can't get involved with, with, with people without actually understanding what their views and you can't speak to them all. Are we doing enough in terms of involving the youth? Are we doing enough in terms of really getting down underneath? Because change will only happen if everybody gets involved in it. Um, from an institutional, very briefly, because I want to just offer the opportunity for any final questions from people. Very briefly, are we doing enough uh, within the city, in Barcelona, specifically, with okay. all the stuff that's going on at an institutional level, to really do that in an, in an intelligent, informed, pragmatic way? Well, I would say that th there's a very good job already done in Barcelona that it started with the 21st agenda uh, to really uh, have a a contact, a direct contact with, with schools and NGOs and, and companies, starting that, that's, that, that's something that starts some, some years ago, that basically put the 21st agenda in their mind and, and explained it. From here, they're moving up to the 2030 agenda. So that means that we have right now like over 300 schools we're working with. And, and, and this is a very good example of what we really need for the future. Yeah, and, and, I, and I know that the Norwegians are, are not the Norwegian, Nordic countries are also very good at that as well in terms of building that body underneath. Finally, just in, 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 in terms of, I, I want to make sure that has, uh, you've heard some interesting stuff. We've covered some uh, of the questions that you had, but are there any other key issues or key questions that anybody would like to raise briefly before we uh, kind of pull the thing together? There's a lady over there. so. Hi, my name is Bronwyn, I'm from Australia um, and uh, have been a former uh, elected representative. And the only time my phone ever called from the people in my constituency was when they wanted to complain about their roads having too many potholes or, you know, that every day the trash hasn't been collected. Um, and I wonder how we manage this tension between um, government providing some sort of noble leadership to say that these are really important issues that we need to be paying attention to and then there's you know the, the discussion a lot that also we're having out on the floor yeah. that it's a distributed democratized decentralized you know very participative model that we're moving to where citizens always should be driving the agenda yeah. and if these are not on the radar for the citizens then how do we manage that tension yeah. It's that aspect of trust. If you have trust, then you get the conversation right. Um, and the different, recognizing the different roles that city and city hall plays. Um, we'll pick up on that one. I'd like to get your views on that, gentleman there. Mi nombre es Orlando Murillo, de Costa Rica. La pregunta es para la, el Ayuntamiento de Barcelona, si todos estos objetivos de desarrollo sostenible Ustedes ya los han correlacionado en alguna lista para que esté más claro que, como se ve aquí, 
qué correlación hay entre cada uno de ellos. Lo digo por lo siguiente, porque esto es como la paloma de la paz, todo lo queremos, es lo mejor. Pero no necesariamente vemos tan claro cómo actuar unos sobre los otros. Puede ser que nos distingamos por eh, acción climática o puede ser que nos distingamos por hacer ciudades buenas, pero ¿qué persona no quiere no ser pobre, tener hambre, tener buena salud, tener buena educación, tener no desigualdad? Entonces, eh, las acciones que podamos tomar están muy, muy hechas a las medidas de cada ciudad, pero sí es importante reconocer de antemano la correlación que puede existir para poder ver cómo se influye en cada una de ellas. Good, thank you. I didn't understand a word of that, um, and I'm sure it was good, but the good news is we've got... So, Miguel, could you do me a favor and, and kind of headline what the question was about okay. and respond to it? And I think it's fair from a, from a local perspective, the first question, which is about um, actually that tension of, of, of the roles of government. If you could very briefly cover off that, um, that would be very much... Cool. Okay, about, about the tensions, yes. There's the tension between the day-to-day -day that you have yeah. to, to, to give you an answer to the short, to the short uh, questions, but, but we have to be able, and that's, that's, that's something that we, we discussed before with you preparing this session about what are the gaps that we have like uh, as cities. And I think that the, the gap we have is that we have to think above this, this short term, these this four years, and we have to move, move on, and we have to. So we have to find this balance. Uh, how we have to find the balance, I think that everyone in the city has to be engaged with this 2030 agenda. Everyone has to see why we have to go over there, what each of us are able to do to reach it. Okay? That's, that's, that's one point. And, and regarding the, the question of, of, I'm going to translate you this question. <laughs> Good. Basically, our, our colleague was, was talking about uh, how we can correlate SDGs one between another. Okay. Okay? And, and we're working on that. Okay? Yes, I, I, so, so, and when I say we're working on that, because we're be really aware of what does the 2030 agenda means. And the 2030 agenda means basically trying to overcome several challenges at the same time. We, we, I think that we are all aware of the environmental challenge that we face. That's, that I think it's very clear. Well, maybe someone still doesn't believe it, but we have this, 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 this environmental challenge, so we have to move on. We have to move on to more, a more renewable uh, energy society. But this brings us to the, to the second challenge, and this is the economic challenge. And here we have an economic challenge related to this change of energy, a change of, uh, to, to another source of energy, a renewable one, instead of, of, of a, a fossil one. But we are, have another driver here, and it's the future of work. And thanks to digitalization, we don't know what will be the future of work. Well, we try to, but we don't know. So this brings us to the third challenge, and it's social challenge, the fear we have around the future, our, our future and the future of our kids. And, and, and why I'm saying all, all this to you, and maybe it sounds a little bit apocalyptic, but why, why I'm saying that? Because when we talk about SDGs and trying to find solutions, we have to find a solution that try to reach, try to overcome at the same time the environmental challenge, the economic challenge, the social challenge. And another thing that is very important, we have to do it in alliance, and I think Agatha has explained it very well, Alliance, because from the city's level, we are a very important tool, basically because in our, from our point of view in Barcelona, we saw that 92% of the, of, the, of the goals, we, we were able to reach them, we were able to work on that, but it's, it's seen that all, over 70% of them are, are at the city level. The, local, the, the, the national level is able to give us the, the framework, the legal framework. And the umbrella of multilateral bodies like UNICE and others are able to put us together, all together. Not only the governments, but also the academia and the private sector. And I think this is the, the crucial level, to work all together with trying to face at the same time the three, the three main challenges that we have. Yeah. And, and partnership is one of the five Ps. We had three Ps, four Ps, we've got five Ps in the, in the transforming uh, plan. And partnership is, I think, a key one which it engenders the topic of collaboration. So um, just drawing it to a close, um, I, I find it fascinating that this conversation is a totally different conversation 
that we had eight years ago. It's, it's appropriate that we have this conversation. I would like to leave you with a thought, which is um, we do need to think of 2100. If we don't think of 2100, then that sense of urgency, that sense of what we're leaving behind for our kids um, is worrisome. So, so that's important. The second point is it's a personal choice to actually do something about it because we won't make the change unless individuals get involved, and that's us. That's us. But I'd like to ask just finally, Miguel and, and Agatha, if, if there's you know, a word or two, a thought that you'd like to leave with people to, as they disappear off to the airport and think about stuff, what would that thought be? Well, the thought is that I think that we have to, to work together. Like, like I think that, that I know that you say that the 2030 agenda is just in 10 years or that it's the next corner. But, but and, and it's something that it, it might look very nice and very, and very bold at the same time, but we really have to get there. Very good, together. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say before we start working together, it's important to take uh, personal responsibility. Um, I have a pleasure to be always working with the most enthusiastic, the most passionate, the most devoted people um, I, I haven't had the chance to be working with those who are, who are just living everyday life without thinking about the broader picture. So I personally wish there would be more and more people who are um, a little bit idealistic and uh, passionate and powerful enough to be actually following up with, with the actions for what they are preaching. So if we have uh, a critical mass of those people, we'll definitely be able to deliver faster. Super. Super. Deliver faster. I love that. And good. Miguel, Agatha, uh -huh. thank you so much. Uh, great pleasure. Thank you all for being here. Um, some really profound thoughts to take away. Your choice is to make that very practical in your job and in your daily basis. Thank you all for joining. I look forward to seeing you next year. <laughs>